So these two warning lights right here, this is the generator light and this is the oil pressure light. So when I turn the key on, 12 volts gets sent up to these two lights. This light, the other end goes to a terminal on the voltage regulator and that terminal is supposed to output voltage when the generator is making power and what happens is you end up with 12 volts on one side of the light and the voltage rising on the other side of the light and it reaches an, a sort of equilibrium and that will cause the light to go out under normal conditions. So you notice this light did not go out. And even if I rev it up, it doesn't go out. Sometimes uh, if you rev the engine a little bit, it will uh, it'll dim and then go out. But in this case, it doesn't go out no matter what. Pretty easy to take out. Four or five sixteenth screws. These two regular screws right here actually take the cover off so that you can inspect the innards of the uh, voltage regulator but I'm not even gonna bother doing that while it's in the tractor because I can almost guarantee you what I'm gonna find inside there is either a corroded mess or a burnt mess. Oh, I say four screws, three screws. The old tripod effect. Mm. See all this pretty blue, bluish green color? That does not bode well. That indicates corrosion. Let's see just how bad it looks inside. Oh, almost forgot to turn the camera on for the great unveiling. Well, see, that seal actually still feels like it's got some integrity to it. Oh, it's not even half as bad as I thought it would be. Son of a gun. All right, guys, I think I may have fixed the Lucas regulator. It's now time for me to uh, test it. I uh, ended up doing a separate standalone video just regarding the Lucas regulator because this, this particular regulator is used in a lot of uh, English uh, cars like Jaguars and things like that. So I thought maybe that, that might be helpful information to other people working on these regulators. So if you want to check that video out, uh, it'll be the Lucas repair, Lucas regulator repair video. Okay, I've got my voltmeter hooked up directly across my battery terminals because that's going to be just as good a place as any to test this because I've got 12.2 volts on my battery right now and when I start the engine and the RPMs come up, that voltage should go up to a charging voltage. Of course, the other thing that should happen is when I turn the key on, one of these two lights right here, uh, I forget which one it is, I think it's the left one, is the charge light. That light should go out. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, the voltage isn't going up anywhere near as high as I would expect it to go for the charge. Of course, I'm used to alternators. You know, alternators will kick out around 14 and a half volts or so, 14.4, 14 point something anyways. But the voltage is definitely going up. So it could be that the battery is just charged enough that it's just not really drawing current drawing enough to cause the regulator to, to tell that generator to wake up more. But the dash light is going out now. As you can see, both of my lights are indicated. One is oil pressure and the other one is the uh, generator light. And once the tractor started, they'll go out. That's what's normally supposed to happen.
Yep, so I don't know. Well, I thought of something else I can do. After I got the generator working and I was able to fully field it by pulsing 12 volts to the field coil here, um, and as soon as I did that, the generator woke right up and started making voltage. Well, I noticed that when I was trying to run it with the regulator, the regulator was not sending any voltage down this wire to the field coil, which is why the generator wasn't working, even after I repaired it. So, now I can look at what the actual voltage is going to the field coil. Oh, so what I was saying was uh, what I could do is now I can test it. I could see what the regulator sends for field voltage when I start the engine and uh, then, you know, make sure it's sending field voltage. And then I could put a load on it, which this is a diesel, so the ignition doesn't have an ignition system to draw power. It's just got the gauges and the headlights, but I can turn the headlights on at least and see what happens. So with the key on, we only got 0.17 volts, which is what I would expect. No voltage sent to it yet. Well, I'm a little surprised the headlights didn't go a little bit dimmer when I uh, shut the tractor off, but again, maybe my battery's just got plenty of charge in it. That's a huge battery, but I think this is uh, repaired because my lights are going out, so my charge charging system problem indicator light is going out on the dash when the tractor starts is what I meant to say, so. Well, now that I get this generator problem straightened out, at least for the time being, uh, you'd think I'd be pretty happy about the progress, but uh, I am not, and the reason is right here. Uh, so we had a lot of rain in a short period of time, and I haven't been working on the tractor, and then I came over today to work on it, and uh, get up here, and I look, and I see all this water, and realize that's under the glass. That's condensation, enough to form large drops. You can see them right there. And what's going to happen is that water is going to probably end up falling off and getting down inside there if it hasn't already done so. So clearly there's something wrong with the seal on this unit. Um, this part right here seals to the dashboard with a large gasket, which I did buy a new one and put in. And that should have kept any water from being able to get in here. So... This water, the way that the pattern of it looks, you zoom in here, I mean that sure as heck looks like a condensation issue. Because it's clear here, and you can just see the tiny beads and then the heavier beads. But I mean, that moisture getting inside there, that's exactly what murdered the last one that was in here. Now, the last one was one that was made in England, probably better quality. But the last one was very old, so that's why you know, I could expect over years that eventually some seals and stuff would start to break down. But as for this, th this makes no sense to me at all. And for the money I spent for this thing, you know, getting one from Europe so that I could get one with the right color and then having the, you know, and not be the greatest finish on here. And I mean, I might as well have just bought a cheap junk one from India for 90 bucks. Well, enough of me uh, ranting about that. I just hooked the uh, tachometer cable back up. Yeah, fun. Again, it's like a little.
So I don't know. I mean, that could be the sending unit, um, but it could also be, or it could be wiring, but it could also be something already damaged with the gauge uh, because of this water getting in there. Or who knows, you know, since this is the first time I had it operating with the voltages correct, it could have been damaged right along. But that's another issue already. I don't know about the temperature gauge because I haven't run it long enough to see if it's going to get hot. I guess I should maybe uh, take it for a ride and see if I can get the temperature gauge to start to register. Well, the temperature gauge is starting to come up, so that's a good sign. And the fuel gauge seems to have stabilized. And I might actually be that low on fuel. I don't really know how much I can I'm still bouncing around a bit and you drive it, but that might be just the sending you can move around in there. See, it's actually pretty stable and the engine's not running.